I'm Daryl Regal, clinical professor of dermatology at Mount Sinai, and I chaired a session today that was really exciting about 10 things that can really help you become better with your patients. And there were practical tips in there, like never have a clock in your waiting room because then people know that the time is running through and they're waiting longer and longer. Also back to certain things that were helpful clinically, like how to do a better nail exam, how to do a better hair exam, uh, and how to treat your patient with psoriasis more efficiently. These were also all useful tips that you could use immediately and help you in your practice, and our attendees really enjoyed it. Hi, I'm Bonnie Aluski. I'm a professor and chair of dermatology at the Department of Dermatology at the University of Alabama. And my contribution to our tips, you will be a better clinician if, when you see a patient who itches, you look at their palms and look for hyperlinearity. Hyperlinearity could be a sign of atopic dermatitis, and that could be their cause of itch. You might also be a better clinician if, in addition, you look at the fingernails. The fingernails can be a window to systemic disease and will give you clues to skin disease and systemic disease. Okay, I'm Dr. Jim Del Rosso, and like we ask you to unlock your potential, I'm going to unlock my face so I can tell you about the session that I'm involved with. I'm contributing with regard to acne vulgaris, and a couple of suggestions I have is, first of all, when you see a patient who's presenting with acne, obviously they may have a history of previous treatment or not, but unless they're at the far end of the severity, where there's really not much further they can go in terms of more severe disease, when I'm looking at the patient at, on that day, at that point in time, I envision about 25 to 30% worse acne than what they have. Because you often hear, especially if it's a teenager or a patient, a minor, they're there with the parent and the mother or father, usually the mother is saying, you should have seen Johnny three weeks ago. And they're probably right. You're seeing them at a different point in time. And on that day, you're not necessarily seeing the worst acne that they have. So I treat ahead of what I'm visibly seeing so that I'm staying ahead of the acne. Otherwise, you're always playing catch up. Now that brilliant pearl, uh, there are others that follow how to discuss usage of medications so that it enhances compliance. And hopefully you'll get an opportunity to see the whole presentation. My last tip, at this meeting, they have lifesavers. So you just kind of walk by secretly, get your hand in the bowl, and get your supply for the entire meeting. It's a great meeting, and I hope you enjoy it. Hi, I'm Mark Lebwell, and I am delighted to be giving you three of my top 10 tips to make you a better clinician. The first of them is embrace new therapies. There are many new treatments coming out, and if you are the first to use them, you will become the expert, and your reputation will expand, and you'll get more patients that way. The second tip is specific to QR powder. It's a powder that you put on wounds that won't stop bleeding, and it works very well. It costs a few dollars per packet, and it is well worth it. And the third tip is use specialty pharmacies that will allow you, your patients, to get their medication at a discounted price. I'm Dr. Matt Levitt, and it'll be my pleasure to talk to you about two pearls. One is in relationship to hair loss, diagnosis, the use of trichoscopy, which is basically taking your dermatoscope and looking at the hair follicles under a lot of magnification is, is hugely powerful in terms of diagnosis. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about what you would see with female pattern, male pattern, and like in Plano pilaris. The second one is more on the treatment side. Uh, a lot of times patients have trouble with compliance with topical medicine uh, for hair loss. So I'm going to talk about uh, something that's really come back into play, which is oral minoxidil. And I'm going to talk about what uh, uh, is the preferred dosage and how you should take it, what are uh, some precautions, and then what should be your expectations.